Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of whole number addition and subtraction. It's important that we know we're talking about the set of whole numbers when it comes to these properties. So let's just be clear about what do we mean by whole numbers. While the set of whole numbers, often denoted with a capital W, is equal to the union of the set containing the number zero and often denoted by capital N, the set of natural numbers. Now remember, the set of natural numbers are our positive counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and so on, and so on. When we take the union of those two sets, we are adding them together. So that is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. That is our set of whole numbers. All right, so let's jump into our properties. Our first property that we're gonna talk about is the closure property of addition for whole numbers. Mathematically, the closure property says, if A and B are whole numbers, then A plus B is a unique whole number. Now, while I definitely think it's important to show the mathematical definitions, when we're working with younger learners, we definitely wanna have a different way of stating that so that it's more easily understandable. So in words, we might say, if we add two whole numbers, we get a new whole number. In general, closure on an operation means that when we perform that operation on two elements of a set, we get a result that is still inside the set. We have a whole video on showing closure on addition for different sets, so check that out if you want to see more of that. Okay, moving on to the next property, the commutative property for addition of whole numbers. Thinking about the word commutative, it comes from commute or to move. So mathematically, this property says if A and B are whole numbers, then A plus B is the same or is equal to B plus A. Again, just trying to think of a way to rephrase that in simpler terms, we might say, we can add whole numbers in any order and still get the same answer. Especially for those just learning addition, this concept is not necessarily intuitive. So it is important that we model it and we kind of show or prove this to young learners so that they can really internalize it. One way you might do that is using your number line. So let's say we want to show learners that four plus two which we know from knowing addition that that six is the same thing as if we were to put those numbers in the opposite order and say two plus four. So here, visually and concretely, someone could see that both of these have a length or a measurement of six. You could of course also do this in a concrete way. You could show numbers of items and have students count, but again, don't assume that these properties are intuitive. Show learners how they work. Our next property for addition of whole numbers is our associative property. So this says that if A, B, and C are whole numbers, then A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. Now notice the difference here is the placement in parentheses. When we talk about associative property, we're talking about how we group things. So here, with A plus B being grouped first, that means we would add A and B first, then add C to the result. On the right-hand side here, with B plus C being in parentheses, that means we would add B and C together first, and then add A to the result. Again, wanting to be able to say that in a little bit of a different way, we might say we can regroup whole numbers when we add and still get the same answer. So one way that you might show learners how this works is to write it out and do one side at a time and verify that they're equal. So let's look at eight plus four plus six. If we group eight and four first, like on the left, then we get 12 from eight plus four, then we can group the six and get a total of 18. Now, if instead we were to group the four and the six first, which we might want to do based on our strategy of making 10 to make this a little bit easier, 
Grouping the four and the six, of course we get 10. So eight plus 10 is 18. You can do this with any group of numbers and show your students that no matter what numbers I pick, it will be the same on the left and the right. And that gives us our associative property of addition. Now our final property for addition of whole numbers is the identity property. So mathematically, there is a unique whole number zero, which we call the additive identity, such that for any whole number a, a plus zero equals a. Saying that a little bit more simply, we could say when we add zero to any whole number, we get that same number back and zero is the only special number that works like that. All right, so now that we've got all of our properties for addition, let's take a look at subtraction. So first, it's important that we define subtraction for whole numbers. So mathematically, our definition for subtraction of whole numbers says, for any whole numbers a and b, such that a is greater than or equal to b, that's an important part here, it is important that a is the larger of the two values if they are not equal. Then a minus b is the unique whole number c such that b plus c equals a. So that's our definition for subtraction for whole numbers. So we want to say, okay, in other words, subtraction is the opposite of addition. But in order for it to work with whole numbers, we need to take the smaller number away from the bigger number. So now we want to think about, does subtraction have all the same properties of addition? Well, let's go through them and see. Does subtraction have the closure property for whole numbers? Well, take any two random whole numbers. Let's take six and four for instance. If we can do this subtraction both directions, then we might think closure is there. So let's check it out. 6 minus 4 equals c. By our definition of subtraction, that must mean that there is a value such that c plus 4 equals 6. Well, of course there is, right? 2 plus 4 equals 6. That is a whole number. Now if we flip them around, 4 minus 6 equals c, by our definition, that would imply that c plus 6 equals 4. Since there is no such number c in the set of whole numbers, which again is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, then subtraction does not have the closure property for subtraction or for whole numbers because I can take two whole numbers, 4 and 6, try to perform subtraction and not end up back in the whole numbers. So no, subtraction is not, or the whole numbers are not closed on subtraction. What about the commutative property for whole numbers? Is it true that we can subtract in any order and get the same answer? Well, take six and four again. We just showed that six minus four is equal to two, but that four minus six does not exist for the whole numbers. So clearly, 6 minus 4 is not the same as 4 minus 6. So no, subtraction does not have the commutative property for whole numbers. What about the associative property for whole numbers? Can we regroup in subtraction on whole numbers and get the same answer? Well, let's take three values, 1, 3, and 5. Can we show that the left and the right are the same? So if we first group five minus three, five minus three gives us two. Then two minus one is one. Let's check the other side. If we first group the three and the one, three minus one is two. Then five minus two is three. And certainly one is not equal to three. So here we have a counterexample showing that no, subtraction does not have the associative property for whole numbers. Okay, last one. What about the identity property? We've been 0 for 3. Does subtraction have the identity property? Well, essentially what we're asking is, for every whole number a, is a minus 0 equal to a? 
Hmm. Well, using our definition of subtraction, if that is the case, then it must be the case that a plus zero equals a. This is true by the identity property of addition, which we know is true. So the answer is yes, subtraction does have the identity property for whole numbers. The subtracting identity is again zero. All right guys, that does it for this video on properties of whole number addition and subtraction. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.